uh, I'm going to present you with one of my favorite storytellers and storytelling instructors, and that would be Julia Whitehouse. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much, Cindy, for that uh, delightful uh, introduction. I, uh, I am so excited to be here. This is uh, my first webinar, so uh, please don't let me play with my hair too much. Uh, <laughs> I am very excited to be here. This is uh, just a subject very near and dear to my heart. And I want to tell you first how we're going to run down the next uh, 20, 30 minutes or so, what you should expect, OK? Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. Then I'm going to uh, detail some exercises that are helpful. Uh, then I am going to uh, give you some very inspiring questions. And then some tips and tricks, some enthusiastic uh, support uh, that I think of whenever I'm stuck or listening to just negativity too much. And, uh, and then we will open it up to a Q and A uh, for uh, anything that you have in your, uh, in your brain at the end if something wasn't answered or you're inspired to answer anything. I cannot see you uh, and the chat will be monitored by Cindy. So if you are, uh, if you're having technical difficulty or anything, just note that throughout uh, the show via the chat. I will not be able to uh, be aware of that. Um, that being said, I also want to let you guys know that feel free to take notes. Everything that I'm going to say is golden. Okay, uh, that is just, it's something I know. Uh, <laughs> I'm very excited, like I said, to talk about how to tell stories when you think that you have none to tell because I have been telling my own stories for the majority of my 20 something odd uh, performing career. And uh, inevitably, whether I am doing my own stories through sketch comedy or solo performance, uh, inevitably I get stuck at some point. And I think, oh, that's it. I've done it all. I've, I've, I've told all the stories that I meant to tell. I've remembered everything. I've gone through the process. There's nothing left done. Uh, or the other, the other fantastic voice inside my head uh, is, uh, nobody cares. Just shut up. You, you never had anything anyway in the first place. <laughs> uh, nothing you say is important and uh, people have better things to do. So um, just stop. Just stop. And I'll tell you, uh, I'm very comfortable with that voice because that voice is me. Uh, that voice is fear. That voice is ever present and it never goes away. It can become quieter and this is the way to make it be quiet. Uh, just get to it. Say, go away. Uh, and the go away is sitting down and doing the work, just getting to it, despite that voice being in the back of your head. It's never going to go away. Just know that. It's never going to go away. Elizabeth Gilbert, I think, uh, says in her book, Big Magic, and I'm sure she said it elsewhere, is that fear is always going to be in your car. Just don't let it be the driver. It can sit in the back and it can be like, no, 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 you should go this way. No. Just don't listen to it. And the way to not listen to it is to do the work. Uh, oh, many years ago now, I uh, did a show at the Upright Citizens Brigade called Naked People. And I spent the better part of two years working on it. And it was a very, very personal uh, piece of comedy. <laughs> and I loved doing it. And it was everything that I was. And it was very naked emotionally and physically on stage. Uh, on a regular basis, and then suddenly the run ended, uh, and I was like, "What am I going to do?" And it took me, it took me a little while to figure that out. Uh, but one of the things that I did was uh, recommended uh, by a friend of mine, um, Carrie McGuire, name dropping. Uh, she recommended a site called 750 Words. So I got all into writing at least 750 words every single day. And for 100 days straight, I decided to take on that challenge, do seven, at least 750 words per day for 100 days. And I did it. I even, like a friend of mine got married that summer. I, I was still, I was like, 
typing away on a little iPad trying to get my 750 words in uh, while she was getting her hair done. You know, I, uh, I was a little maniacal about it, but my purpose was to just offload, just get everything out of my brain. And if you're familiar with word count, that's about a page and a half. And it can be done in about 20 minutes if you're typing really fast and you're just like, ugh offloading brain, not like really worried about what the content is, just like word uh, vomit. Mm -hmm. And so I, I just did that for 100 days. And then I took a break. And then I told myself, I am going to go back and I'm going to look at what I, what I uh, wrote. I'm going to find out, read everything and uh, sort through the word vomit and see whether or not there is a uh, pattern. And what I found was that I was dealing with and regurgitating a lot of the same stories uh, about an abusive relationship that I had been in uh, years previous. And uh, so it was clear to me, this is what I want to work on. This is what I want to talk about. I want to develop a show about abuse, a funny show about abuse. Uh, <laughs> uh, whether or not I was successful in that, uh, it's uh, neither here nor there because I created the work. I did it, a 45 minute show I uh, put together for Solocom and uh, I enjoyed doing it. I did it a, a few times, I loved it. And, and then I put it down and then started picking the show apart and then doing like smaller stories from it. And, uh, uh, and over the years, I uh, done two different stories about 12 minutes each for the risk uh, show and then they were on the podcast and uh, one of which uh, is called uh, uh, oh my goodness now uh, in on the verge and in costume that was just recently on the uh, risk podcast in November and uh, that that was stepping off the stage I felt like it was a slam dunk I felt like uh, it was a huge, beautiful audience of supportive people, and uh, Kevin was on fire as host that day, and I had gotten brilliant coaching from Cindy, and uh, and also Michelle, and just uh, a lot of the team members here at Story Studio, and the point is, is that then it was done. It went from 100 days of writing to... Uh, a 45 minute show to breaking it down to 12 minute stories and one particular one that I am beyond proud of. And I hope uh, Cindy is going to link that in the chat, I believe. But, um, and that was over the course of five plus years. The, this takes time. That is something I want to impress upon you guys right now. You should not and uh, cannot demand of yourself absolute perfection at the very top of this process. This is not what storytelling is. It is a fluid medium. It is something that is born from our hearts and every day our perspective becomes clearer and more precise and more beautiful in that. So, that's something I uh, think is important for you to know just at the very top, uh, whether or not you are a seasoned storyteller or someone that is just getting into it. When you're starting a new story, you're starting a, a very long journey. Because even after I listened to myself on the Risk pod podcast, I was like, hmm, I'd change that a little bit. I'd change. And so the next time I tell the story, I will. Uh, and it's not about changing the truth. It's just about changing the wording, maybe, or the timing of something, or maybe the placement of a detail. Uh, anyway, this is how you get started. Whether you're here because uh, it seems like most people are here just for new ideas. and uh, But there are some people here because they think that they have absolutely nothing in their head to tell a story about. And this is how we attack. All right, ready? Here are my top three tips for uh, for just jumping right in. My top three uh, tips, exercises. All right, number one, set a timer. Whether it's five minutes, 10 minutes, 
20 minutes, whatever amount of time you think that you can uh, squeeze in between dinner and Netflix or the kids waking up and, uh, you know, when you wake up and the kids wake up or uh, whatever, what have you, however long you think that you have, just set a timer and start with the worst sentence you can possibly write. I ate bleh, 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 whatever, just believe that it is the worst sentence and that it's going to be edited out from your eventual telling. Uh, but just get writing. Just let the words flow, whether you're writing with a pen and paper, pencil and paper, or your uh, fingertips and those keys, just get the words flowing. That's exercise number one, set a timer. Exercise number two, write down a conversation. Recall a conversation that you had and like a play, write it out. Like me said, do 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 and the other person. There is, in my opinion, nothing more fun than to watch somebody play two parts of a conversation. Uh, it is a when you are filling out a scene, whether it's, you know, the what it smelled like or what it looked like or what it felt like in your inner in your inner body. Uh, there's also that conversation that happens between two people in a scene uh, or a relationship, that conversation can illustrate so much. And to just say, and then I told them blah, blah, like, and then I told them that they should just get out of my life. Like, no, no, no. I want to hear you say, get out of my life. And then I want to hear what they said. You know, like, how often have you been in a conversation where you and then what did she say? And then what happened? And then what did she say? And then what did he say? What did you say to that? You know, that's, that's what, that sort of energy is what you can do when, uh, when or what you can create when you uh, create a conversation, a, a recreate a conversation in your story. And an exercise to get to that point is to just write out a conversation as though it's a play from your recollection. Uh, that's tip number two, uh, or exercise number two. And thirdly, my favorite exercise is to write a confessional letter that you will never send. And now that's a little lie that you're telling your brain. You are eventually going to share this, but there, your, your brain is so sensitive, right? If you just say, I'm not gonna send it brain, Brain, I'm not going to send it. Just say whatever you want. Remember everything and just say whatever you want. All the facts, all the feelings. You will be surprised. You will be surprised how your brain will be so easily like, oh yeah, sure, I'll, I'll write it all down. And then all you have to do, is, like you already have it. You already have it on the piece of paper. You already have it on, uh, on, your, on your private blog. Uh, then you can work on it and actually make it a piece of entertaining uh, art for people once you get just all the facts and the feelings out as though you've just confessed it unafraid of whether or not someone is going to hear it. Yes. So I did that recently with a subject that I thought that I was never going to write about that. I thought that I was done, done, done. And I'm so glad I did because it uh, opened up a whole whole other uh, bag of tricks for me. And anyway, so but that's that's in process, uh, ladies, gentlemen, and gentle thems. Um, so another reason why this sub subject is particularly uh, meaningful to me is because I host a show called Happy Hour Story Hour, and I have done so for the past seven plus years. And where as before the pandemic, we used to be at uh, the duplex every Monday at seven o'clock. We are now on Instagram, on my Instagram. I encourage you to follow me and come see the show at, uh, at Julia W. Hare uh, every Monday at seven o'clock. But one of my favorite things uh, to hear from people when I tell them that I host a show, a uh, storytelling open mic, they should come, they should tell a story. Um, is the people that respond with, uh, oh, no, not me. Oh, no, no, I have nothing to say. And 
I always, I, I always respond, uh, or often uh, respond, because, you know, I, I don't want to encourage people if they're not, you know, if they're not really, really uh, not interested. Uh, but I, uh, I ask them, oh, do, you know, do you not have any fears? Do you not have any opinions? Because um, we all do. And the way to derive a story from those fears and opinions, the strongly held opinions that we have, is to just ask why. All right, so here are my three favorite questions that I ask myself. Um, what are my values? This is something that I've recently been uh, exploring. Because uh, I, I like to think that I'm a pretty, like, go with the flow, you know, like, uh, to each his own. Uh, you know, don't rain on my parade and I won't rain on yours, uh, sort of gal. Uh, but there are some things that I hold dear, uh, that I value very, very strongly. And I've been writing a list and then uh, asking myself why and where those values came from. And maybe did I used to hold the opposite value? Uh, so that's one question. Uh, what am I afraid of? and why, uh, and what makes me awesome, and why. Uh, three questions that when you are thinking about how to begin, uh, that's, uh, that's what you can ask yourself, and set that timer and just go. And uh, so, uh, the tips and tricks, like I just have two really simple ones. When you are doing, uh, doing dishes, cleaning your bathroom, scrubbing grout, uh, cleaning out the, the refrigerator, uh, wiping toddler uh, handprints off televisions and mirrors throughout your house, or digging under the couch. Oh, oh I digress. I have a lot to do after this webinar. Uh, <laughs> uh, keep your brain open. When you're doing menial tasks, keep your brain open. Let your hands do the work and the scrubbing and the sweeping and keep your brain open. Uh, those are the times when I'm in the shower doing things that I've done a thousand times before or scrubbing dishes. That's when the ideas come to me. And then when I've finished the job, I go, I write it down. The more you write down, the more you're telling your brain that you care what's inside of it. And I know it sounds like spiritual and also science. That's my brand. Uh, my second tip trick uh, for you is to listen to simply listen to other stories. Uh, when I started Happy Hour Story Hour, I only, I only thought of it as a place for me to work on my stories once a week. I, ha I had a for sure place to uh, practice my stories. I found out very quickly that I was learning a whole lot more from listening to other people tell their stories. And I cannot, cannot begin to tell you how, uh, how helpful it is. It's like going out and volunteering. You're shutting off uh, that part of your brain is think that's thinking all about you, like, oh God, there's nothing left, or oh gosh, my voice isn't valid. Like you're shutting off that part of yourself and you're just listening and like giving unto another person. And also you could find while you're listening to a story about uh, maybe, someone's dog getting high or or uh, an abusive relationship or uh or you know confronting your parents about you know why you do what you do uh maybe you're listening to those stories and you're like wait a second i've got a story i've got a story about that i've got and sure you do and so go write it and then put it down practice it and perform it this is the place uh, that you want to be in your head where you're thinking, God, that jealousy, let it be your guide. Let it be your guide and your motivator. M more than anything, uh, jealousy is my motivator when I'm like, oh, I want that. I can do that. So, uh, so 
those are my tips and tricks. So in conclusion, before we get to uh, some questions uh, that you have, I want to let you guys know that I, uh, uh, it's inevitable that the, this vo these voices that tell you not to tell your stories or that tell you that you have no stories left uh, are going to be in your head. It's inevitable. It's part of the process. It helps you to uh, start the cycle again and be fresh, right? So uh, in those dire times, and especially now when everything is so seemingly on fire with the pandemic and uh, everything, um, the injustices of the world feel enormously overwhelming right now and uh and then life stuff doesn't stop so i hear you and i feel you so just know that maybe it's also okay to just listen right now and to trust that your time to speak will be soon okay sometimes we just need to fill the well and let's spend that time actively listening to each other. If we can't use our voice yet, listen. And if you're feeling like you wanna use your voice but you don't know where exactly to begin and, and you've written all the stuff but you, you wanna get it out but you don't know how, call a friend. Call a friend and let them have it. Tell them that you need a few minutes of their time just to share something, an experience that happened to you, or you know, something that you thought was funny. And if you don't have that friend that you feel like you can share something with, let me be that friend for you and come to my show at Happy Hour Story Hour every Monday at seven o'clock. It's not just me, it's a whole community of people, a whole family of storytellers that love to hear first timers express themselves and share their story. So uh, with that, I'd like to open it up to uh, the questions that you may have. Uh, I think uh, we invite Cindy. Uh, I'm back. So I've been collecting them. Um, Great. Um, there's three and I'm just gonna let people know you know we start about five minutes late so we're gonna go five minutes longer if you have to go we will not be offended um, and we can actually run a little bit long so if we have a lot of questions we can run a few minutes longer so um, the first one I actually see I misread it so um, ignore the answer I gave you <laughs> but let's see what Julia has to say what if you haven't had a major traumatic event or experience like an abusive relationship in your Oh, okay, great. Well, so uh, uh, that's a okay, and uh, congratulations, and I'm very happy for you. Uh, that doesn't mean that you don't have any stories. Uh, my guess is that you have moved at some point in your life. My guess is is that you've had a relationship that hasn't worked out. Uh, they can't all have been amicable. Uh, maybe they haven't been abusive. That's great. Uh, but I'm, I'm sure there have been some disappointments in your life. Uh, and, and if not disappointments, if you don't want to go down that route, think about all the joys in your life or the things that you're grateful for uh, or the first times. Uh, what, are, what are the things uh, like, when, what was the f first time that you were introduced to cooking? Maybe you are a great chef and you, uh, you, know, you want to explore that story. How did you start loving food? Um, that's something I've been thinking a lot about because I've been doing so much cooking uh, up in my house, <laughs> up in my house. Uh, and uh, that's something I'm like, how did I learn how to cook? Uh, so anyway, ask yourself those questions. And, and then the big one is why? uh after after every question um yes i hope that answers i actually think on that one is just surprises you know mm -hmm. especially maybe you don't have a lot of dark stories and you don't want to go there and not all stories are about disappointments stories are about changes and so what surprised you anytime you were surprised while well, you were expecting one thing and you got another so what yeah. are the happy surprises or the surprises about people you knew or family yeah. members yeah or when were your expectations dashed you know, that's the, yeah, yeah. Cool. 
All right, moving on to the next question. Uh, we have got, um, uh, how much time should you dedicate for these exercises that you uh, suggested? Uh, like I said, set a timer. I, my favorite amount of time to uh, write, like what seems to be, uh, if I can do more or if I do just a little less, that's a-okay, is I set a timer for 20 minutes. Uh, so that that seems to be my golden time, but if you know yours is 30 minutes, then great. Uh, whatever amount of time you can stand thinking about yourself, right? Uh, it, sometimes it takes a little bit of, you know, working up to, you know, like you get a little like, oh gosh, oh, I'm rehashing all this, you know, but then your brain remembers a few more details and it becomes more fun, you know, follow the fun also. Like if you're not having any fun, uh, you know, developing a story or writing about something, put it aside, write about something else. You may not be ready to work on it, but if you're feeling like, gosh, this isn't fun, but I want to keep on going, then that's the challenging fun. So do keep on going. It's a, uh, yeah, it's a fine line, but definitely uh, working through stuff is uh, uh, at whatever amount of time you can carve out for yourself. I mean, we're spending so much time with ourselves and yet are we really with ourselves, right? That's a good point. The big questions here. You guys are asking me questions, but then I'm, asking the big questions back. <laughs> All right, here is a good one. Uh, this is a, a great one just in general. What are the tips for editing stories? Ah, okay. So again, this is uh, my favorite thing uh, to do. Uh, again, it starts with time, right? So you write it all out, you uh, maybe talk it out, and you realize you have a 20 minute story that you know maybe it shouldn't be 20 minutes. And also there aren't a lot of storytelling shows that will give you 20 minutes. Uh, but uh, my favorite tip, it comes with a, a timing a scenario as well. So you have a 20 minute story, set a 10 minute timer and see what comes out. And then once you get it to 10 minutes, set a timer for seven and see how much of the story you can still tell and what drops as you look at that timing tick away, right? Uh, that's the, just like kind of paring it down, paring it down. The way I, I saw a picture, uh, a Picasso picture of a horse once, I liken it to this, where there's a, a picture of a horse like perfectly drawn and then uh, the next picture in the, um, uh, I can't remember that this is, there's an artistic word for like triptych. Uh, it wasn't a, yeah, triptych, but it was a lot more than uh, three pictures. Then it was a picture of a horse with a few lesser lines. And then it was another picture of a horse with even lesser lines. And then by the end of like maybe eight pictures or so, there were, it was just one line, but you could still tell it was a horse. So that's sort of what you want to do with your words. Uh, using a timer. I have another one that's actually one of my go-tos for editing is choosing a theme. Um, and then it's like, uh, it's going to be bravery. Great. So now you have your story and you're looking at it through the lens of bravery and there might be things to remove. And if yep. it doesn't work, you say, eh, you know what, let's try that. It's going to be unconditional love. And mm -hmm. then you, you put the different lenses on it as a way to filter. And then whatever doesn't serve the story doesn't serve that particular story. But then also know that like, just like with cooking, uh, like nothing gets, not everything gets used in like in the pot, like in, in the stew, you know, like you, maybe you're not going to use carrots this time. That's fine. You got carrots for the salad that you're going to say, like, that's, you know, you are not one story. You can use those details from your life to color another story. Yes. Um, we have four questions left, and on that note, um, I think this like goes right into this. Uh, Brad says, I'm very to the point when I speak, so my stories tend to be seconds long. How do I overcome that? Uh, yeah, fill, fill it out with uh, details. Uh, this is, my shorthand for storytelling is facts, feelings. My guess is if you are telling us uh, like 
three second stories or three minute stories, you may be leaving out uh, how you feel. And that just means that you need to just sit down and be like, all right, this happened. How did I feel? How did I feel inside my body? How did I feel inside my head? Uh, and so forth, so on. Uh, what did it you know, do to uh, my expectations of self for the future, the past, so forth, so on? Like, were you afraid of what people would think of you? that's, you know, you start breaking, breaking down the facts of your story, the, and then, and then, and then of it by inserting a little bit more of you. That's the biggest note that I give at happy hour story hour is I want a little bit more you. <laughs> cool. Um, Laura has uh, two questions. Um, but this one, I bet you are the person because you have so many shows that you're putting online with your, with your show. Um, any tips for feeling more comfortable telling stories online? All right. Uh, well, uh, at my show, it's a uh, split screen Instagram live. So it's, uh, barring any technical difficulties, uh, it's always pretty a smooth one-sided conversation. Uh, if there are um, and where you're getting an enthusiastic response from me and also, uh, and, and like ignoring the comments and also I'm not interrupting you. So you can like, it's like a dinner party where I'm seated next to you and just like, ah. and you know, there are other people listening, but like you're focused on me. Uh, at other shows I've found, uh, for me, what I enjoy on Zoom is to, uh, make, uh, it the gallery view so that I can see as many people as possible while I'm performing. Uh, I'm sure you've noticed that I just am simply looking at myself because I am so beautiful and I love looking at uh, myself. So, um, uh, and so in order to uh, uh, try and keep myself from doing that so much, I look at a gallery view and, and a sort of not focus on any one person. Um, that's, yeah, that's what I've done uh, for, to make myself comfortable. Uh, does that answer the question? Yeah, she says, okay, that helps. I never know where to look. I'm looking at myself, it isn't helpful. Actually, there's a camera, um, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Look at the camera because now I'm looking into your soul as yeah. opposed to now I'm looking at Julia or now I'm looking at myself. Yeah. So put a little arrow by that camera when you tell the story. Um, I would also add practice. There are open mics. Do Julia's open mic. The Story Studio is running an open mic. Next one is tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, I'll put my email down here. You can email me and I can get you in there. The first 10 people get to tell the story. Um, and, you, you know, and those others get to observe. Um, an anonymous attendee. I love the anonymous. Hello. Okay, say I've done uh, an exercise or two and got something written, but what do I do if there's if I'm still really nervous to do anything in front of other people? All right, well, Actually, that speaks well to Laura says, part two, any tips on nerves panic when telling stories on stage? So we got some stage fright stuff here. Yeah, okay. Are, are you ready? Number one, it's all about practice. But number two, and this is, oh, this is so easy. It's so easy, guys. All you have to do is tell people that you are nervous. That's it. Oh, and wow. don't go away. And I know it sounds like, what? I don't want to tell them? No, like, but then I will be vulnerable. Wait, hold on. You're already going to be vulnerable because you're sharing part of your life. So if you just say, hey, I'm a little nervous to share this story. All right, we're on your side immediately. Number two, what that makes us think is, oh man, are we in for a ride? Like, don't you love being told secrets? Don't you love it when somebody confesses something to you? Like that's, and when you feel, it makes you feel like you're the only person, like that you have this bond with this person. And whether it's like in person, live, where you're sharing the air with them or on screen, I like to feel as though I am in on something. Like I'm the only one that got this particular story in this particular time and whether it's the first time or the second time and you're still nervous like I want to hear a story that you're nervous to tell because that means that you care about it and if you care about it mm. oh that's amazing 
Um, actually, you know, we are going to follow up with you because once this video is available, we're going to share the video. I will include with that, we have a one sheet on stage fright tips um, because that's such a big issue for many people that the Story Studio put together a one sheet with videos, with tips and things like that. But it definitely says uh, what Julia has just said as part of those tips. And uh, also, just so everybody knows, I have been performing, like since I was in kindergarten and I played Bambi's mother, I have been nervous on stage most every single time that I go on stage. That is like, you want to do the things that make you feel nervous. And so just, just face it, confess it and go like that's, it doesn't go away. Like uh, I also like the work you keep on still having to put in the work, the nerves still come, the fear is always there. There's no cure for these things. It's simply, it's a managing them by putting in the work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, one last one. I think we have time for one more. Any tips on making delivery more entertaining so that you don't sound like a robot delivering facts? Ah, all right. Uh, I would say uh, it all comes back to feelings. It all comes back to feelings. Uh, is, it, is it like a tonal quality or just a subject matter? Zach, you want to respond to that? Mm, if they're not responding, you have a moment to type it out. Do, why don't you address both? Uh, okay, well, it's, yeah, uh, I, guess, I guess I could do that. A tonal quality. Uh, hey, you know what? Uh, if people don't like your robot voice, then uh, F them, right? Uh, I bet you still have a great story, robot voice uh, person. Uh, I, st I still want to hear it. Uh, and, uh, and, and that's just part of who you are. That's great. Everybody's got a different sort of voice, all right? Be proud of your robot voice. Uh, or, you know, if somebody told you that you have a robot voice, you know, F that person, you probably have not a robot voice. Uh, or call your voice whatever you want to call your voice. But if you're proud of your robot voice, stay proud is great. Uh, if you're afraid that you're coming off like mechanically and that your uh, nerves are getting the better of you or like you feel stilted uh, in your telling, it's all about practice. It's all about practice. And one of the things, the, something that I do, uh, and I did with this presentation, I do with everything that I care about, right before I go to bed at night, I uh, read it, uh, read it just read it and say it out loud uh, or and then make notes or whatever what have you but I uh, tell my story to myself whether I'm reading it or saying it out loud right before I go to bed and then I go to sleep the brain does its magic and like uploads like a better memory of it so when I get up to perform it or say it or share it or what have you I am already working from a memory of it. It's not like just off the cuff. Does that make sense? So it's all about practice. And whether you're doing that alone or in front of people, uh, that's the key. Very cool. Any other questions? If I could segue this while we wait for any more questions. Uh, Zach said it was both, so you did address both, so cool. Uh, it, the, I'd like to segue, if you want uh, more practice, uh, I am teaching a two-day workshop for personal growth or however you want to approach it. It's a, a very similar, very similar both styles of teaching. So uh, a lot of the information is the same, but this weekend, the 22nd and the 23rd, uh, in the uh, middle of the afternoon, I believe it starts at uh, one o'clock. Uh, it's about six hours of... Uh, it starts at 1.30, I just put it up there. About six hours of time over the weekend, uh, split into two days where we work on stories, dig through our minds, mine our minds, if you will, for memories and fun anecdotes and details uh, that we care about sharing and then presenting them to each other. And that's available through the Story Studio this weekend if you would like to sign up for it. Oh, and there's a coupon code for 15% off. Uh, mm -hmm. so if you enjoyed this webinar, uh, I got more for you. I got more. And uh, <laughs> I'd love to see you there and meet some of you. Very cool. 
Uh, Julia, this was awesome. So thank you so much. Um, I learned a lot that I'm going to share with my students. And also now I have some exercises that I should be doing. I love the 750 words thing. Um, I've never done it before. Um, I'm going to just transition before we shut it down because there's a couple of things that I just want to promote. We have another uh, webinar coming up. It is uh, an hour with uh, Brian Kett and David Crabb, and it is the do's and don'ts of effective storytelling. It's uh, $20, uh, but just letting you know, we understand that a lot of people are struggling, right? So if you find yourself in a position where you can't afford 20 bucks, uh, you email me and we are doing low cost or scholarship um, presentation. So you can uh, most likely get a scholarship if you email me. Uh, but I'm going to pop that link in there in just a moment. Uh, we also have a level one storytelling workshop coming up with Amy Soloway at the end of August. Um, and that is uh, two days, very much like Julia's, use the coupon code, learn online. Um, and Otherwise, the only other thing is, like many other companies, we are struggling a bit. So if you really like this, we love giving these free programs. We know that people need them and people are worried about cash. But if you can donate, I'm going to put a link in there. Um, feel free to donate. And if you can't, feel free not to donate. Uh, <laughs> but that is, that is about it. So give me a second. I'm going to find those. And while I do that, Julia, why don't, we, why don't you close us out? Thank you guys so much. I am so grateful to each and every one of you for sharing a part of your afternoon with us. We are, uh, yeah, we are Story Studio. We love what we do, and uh, I hope that you were able to take a little bit of uh, what I talked about and utilize it sometime today. Um, whether you've got uh, a lot on your plate or uh, a little on your plate, there is nobody in the world that has a little on their plate right now. No, we all have a lot. We all have a lot, but I encourage you to take a little bit of time for yourself. And I know I had one other thought. Uh, uh, no, no, that's it. I just wanted to. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to tell you guys how grateful I am to be able to share everything that I've learned and also. You know, I don't feel so alone, having confessed that I also have a downward, downward spiral voice inside my head. So thank you again. Thank you again. Um, if anyone's interested in open mic, email me. If anyone has questions, email me. And as soon as this video is together, we will email it to all of you. So you have a link to watch at your own convenience again or share with friends. Thank you so much. Hope to see you soon. Bye. Bye, y'all.